Oh, um, the new album is going to be released with you actually now in, in Cradle Field. You already start working with Danny uh, mm -hmm. before in development, but uh, you were announced a couple of months ago as a replacement for uh, Lindsay, right? Yes. So uh, I thought that when you were about to be announced for development, you already knew you're going to be in the band, but you couldn't say it. It was the same with Cradle Field. You already knew beforehand you will be in the band, but you couldn't say anything. Yes, I actually joined Cradle at the end of 2019. Um, so for everyone, I'm the new member, but for me, I'm I've been in it for <laughs> two years. <laughs> but of course, lockdown prevented uh, any sort of announcement because we couldn't get together for photos for or videos or any kind of promotion. Yeah. So I found out before Christmas in 2019, but unfortunately it took this long. Um, <laughs> I know for, just because of the way the world is at the moment to be announced. So for me, I feel really old and I've had two birthdays since. But yeah, I had to keep it secret for over a year and a half, which was really difficult. Totally, because uh, the first time we saw you playing with them actually was in May this year with the yeah. streaming show, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right, and I think that uh, Cradle Field were already start, well, they already start working on the new album in 2020. But now we know that you were, the year before you were already there, so you start working from scratch on this album or you are, when you when you were announced for Cradle Field, or when they told you that you were going to be in the band, they didn't have anything yet for the album. So most of it was sort of already written by the time I was there, but they were really receptive for new ideas, so they wanted my input. And so I did contribute, bits were rewritten, I submitted material as well, which then caused some songs to be removed and my ones put on, which I, I feel a bit bad about. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> so those three instrumentals that are, I don't know if you've heard the album. Um, yes. Oh, good. OK, <laughs> so what I'm saying makes sense. Uh, the three instrumentals on the album were written by me. They're, they're completely mine, start to finish. Um, so that was cool. That was something they didn't have before. Um, mm -hmm. And they were very open to me to come in and look over songs and we were constantly refining and writing and editing and making things as best as they can be all the way until it was submitted at the end of 2020. Um, so yeah, it was a ongoing process and to have me come in and to add my take and to get an, an outside fresh perspective on things. Um, yeah, hopefully it all shaped up well to your ears. <laughs> Great. Right. So, um, I heard that uh, on the press notes, at least, they were saying that uh, when they describe the album, this new album, they say at times absurdly brutal and extreme. But actually, mm. when I heard the album, I heard some songs that were really, really catchy. And it seems that it's a lot of you are following these, these steps uh, since the last two albums, which I think is great. The, the, the albums are superb, and this new album is also superb. So, um, do you find something? um that you say okay this is too much or this is too over the top on this new album i mean for me i i, I love a bit of drama i love things <laughs> correct uh, so i i never have a a problem with anything um <laughs> <laughs> i mean i guess if anything my instrumentals are quite epic um mm -hmm. i quite like that I, I i like a little moment i think everything on this album is really well placed uh, the producer really wanted things for this one to differ from the last two albums by being more stripped back. So having those really big riffs and having space. So when the keys do come in or when there is a bit of orchestration, it feels so much more impactful. Um, mm -hmm. So I think the way it's sort of shaped up is, yeah, everything has its place exactly where it's meant to be, like a perfectly balanced ocean. That made no sense, but just pretend it made sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 
was it hard to work with them? I mean, you were working with Danny before, but with the full band now, with Cuddle Phil, it was as hard as you thought it would be, or as you say, now that they let you put your own songs there in the album, it was actually easier than you thought in the first place? Yeah, it's always intimidating coming in to, well, especially a band like Cradle that's been going for so long, and I'm a new person um, mm. into the dynamic because at this point we hadn't all been together in the room as a band. So it was a real steep learning curve of how does everyone work? What's the dynamic? And we're doing it all online. Um, so I didn't really know what to expect. And I was learning as I went how, you know, how this process sort of unfolds. And I was surprised that everyone was so welcoming and that there was just a level of equality and respect amongst everyone and that included me um i wasn't treated like the new person or oh you haven't um there was a lot of respect and enthusiasm for me to come in to have fresh ideas and have a fresh take uh, especially for keys stuff because martin did all the keys and orchestration for the last um few albums mm -hmm. so they were very receptive to um, have me in and I was really surprised especially in the studio as well um, Scott Atkins the our producer was really um, like just he just let me like oh yeah that's a good idea oh it was a very reciprocal process mm -hmm. um, which is awesome which is the best thing I could have hoped for but yeah the pro it was it was easier than I imagined it would be um it, it wasn't as intimidating as I thought it would be yeah right <laughs> and I read in one of your interviews that you said that uh you really feel alive when you are singing more than playing yes. keys I don't know if that's the case so uh when you in some in some point when recording or writing songs here do you try to push not push but Put more vocals because you're doing backing vocals here on this album. You're trying to put yes. more of your own vocals than keys. <laughs> <laughs> it ended up being quite uh, a lot of both. I mean, it's great that I'm on every out, every song vocally apart from one, which is a discourse between a man and his soul. But that's mm. one of my tracks that I worked on with Ashok, and I've got Liar on it, so you know that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I am primarily a vocalist. That's where my training is. I have a bachelor's degree in music and a master's degree in music. Um, and my main instrument of study like during university was vocal. So um, yeah, of course I do keys. I used to play the violin. I play the modern lyre. Um, mm -hmm. I absolutely love composition. I love writing music and I love vocals. Um, and luckily Cradle gave me the opportunity to do both and to be and to let me have that much input as well like vocally to, for them to go oh no that this will work oh yeah yeah that sounds good we can do that um it was very i'd say both were quite um yeah they were quite uh equal on that front i mean i spent more time on the orchestration <laughs> because yeah. you know that's you're doing that at home whereas the studio you've only got a certain amount of time <laughs> yeah <laughs> so in terms of time, um, there was more time spent on the orchestration, but I think it was all very natural in that response, in that sort of respect of, you know, I was happy to do what's best for the song because ultimately it's not, it's not about me. It's about what's best for the song and what's best for the album. Right. And um, before you say that you love drama, you're a very dramatic person and, and music. Feel is uh, on the image, it's very dramatic. Mm -hmm. um, I was watching before the Necromantic Fantasies video, the video clip, mm -hmm. and I can see you putting some faces there, and it's quite dramatic actually. It's, it's quite cool. So, cool. Do have, <laughs> so, do you have any input on, 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 the, on the image side of Cradle Field regarding the video clips or props or something like that? Uh, so, uh, not so much of like the videos and stuff, like. Um, not not really that's more sort of left like the uh, director so vicente who did the both videos from industrial mm -hmm. he sort of has the vision there for those but i chose what i wear and um the direction of sort of the makeup we had a lovely makeup lady called tutti and mm -hmm. i love that her name is tutti um, <laughs> 
who and I sort of like, well, oh, I want this. Um, so there is an amount of freedom for me and how I sort of want to dress and appear within that, which is which is cool. So there there is some flexibility in that. Um, that I do get to be me within the bubble of Cradle. Right, good. Well, last month you played uh, the Bloodstock Festival. I hear you have a special connection with the festival, actually, and uh, and it's cool to play there in England, right? And and it was one of the first festivals when you can have like um, some sort of normal audience because you no, know, here in Spain we have shows, but mm -hmm. these people sitting on chairs with wearing a mask and all that, so. I imagine seeing a cradle feel uh, show like that, and in my head is impossible. But <laughs> <laughs> it was impossible for me too. <laughs> <laughs> but I assume that uh, was a what amazing, right? So, how was the first time with you playing with uh, with a crowd? Because on on the streaming show, it was you playing um, in a studio, but now you have a, a crowd reacting to the songs. How was it for you? Because Terrifying. you know, it's playing playing with a band like Cradle uh, mm. Field on a main stage with mm. thousands and thousands of people seeing you must be different, right, from yeah. your previous yeah. experience. It was terrifying. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I was terrified. I was like, oh my god, can I actually walk out on stage? <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, that's a good for me. That's a good thing because it means I care. Um, Like it's it's good nerves. It was like you say. I have a very special connection with Bloodstock. For me, that was always the top of my bucket list because uh, Bloodstock was the first festival I ever attended. Like when I was 16, and I'd go every year. So I had this really strong emotional and spiritual connection with Bloodstock. I just did not expect it to be my first show in front of an actual audience with Cradle. Um, <laughs> So it was very, it was a very profound experience for me, but it was so much big, bigger than I'm just playing a gig with Cradle. I'm playing this place that I have dreamt of since I was a teenager. I'm here and I'm doing it. This isn't just me going to bed at night fantasizing about it. This is happening. And it was over so quickly and I just wanted to keep going. I wanted to do it again and again and again and again and just do more shows. Um, which we will be doing, but yeah, it was. It was I'm not going to lie and say I wasn't scared. I was scared. <laughs> it was a very out of body experience for me. Cool. And well, Devin Townsend was also playing on that festival, and yeah. I think that he is one of the artists you want to collaborate with in the future, yes. maybe. So, uh, have you had a chance to meet him there at the festival? I haven't. No, I'm so no. gutted. Because we arrived on the day we performed and yeah. left the same day, so I didn't get to see Devin, and I was I was so upset. I was like, "No, my one chance." <laughs> well, hopefully there'll be more chances. Um, I would have loved to have met him. I've heard from so many people that he is an incredibly lovely guy, which is always great to hear. Um, unless you know him and want to want to set up a conversation, I mean, I'm up for it. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. So um, you're having uh, another show in, uh, well, a special show in October there in London, and it's on Halloween night. Yes, it is. So it's going to be so cool. So do you have something special for that night, or it's going to be a normal set for Cradlefield? Well, we're going to have um, some new tracks of the album on there, so that's going to be really exciting, performing those for the first time. Um, it's gonna be re I'm really, really excited about that. Um, <laughs> So the set list is definitely, I mean, I'm just going to say it's sexy. It is a very sexy set list. Uh -huh. um, all the, for me, like some of the best areas of Cradle combined with the new, it really encapsulates the sort of journey of the band of Cradle of Filth. Um, very excited. Uh, the production itself, I'm not sure what's happening yet. Um, I mean, I'll be there, so that's special. Um, <laughs> that's something different, right? Uh, I'll be there on stage. Um, yeah. That's oh, cool. all I really know about it at the moment. Um, I, I wonder what they got planned. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe they'll come down on the ceiling in a harness or something, dressed as a, a bird. Who knows? Yeah. Well, Annabelle, are you a horror fan? A horror movie I fan? I am. I do enjoy a bit of horror, yes. 
All right, because um, actually someone that is coming again to Cradlefield on this album is uh, Pinhead, is Doug Bradley. Yes. He's an, an something very special for, for Cradlefield fans. So are you a fan of, of the Pinhead movies, the Hellraiser? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I had a total moment when I was like, Doug Bradley's on this. Oh, my gosh, Doug Bradley's on this. Um and knowing that he's on um so us dark invincible um he's on it at the beginning and i was like oh my god that's one of my songs oh my god doug <laughs> bradley's on it what i was like technically this means i had a duet with doug bradley it doesn't but you know that's what i tell myself it's very <laughs> it makes you realize the sort of gravity of this of how big this actually is like this is doug bradley this is the horror world, the film industry world, which is a huge multi-billion industry merging with the music world. And there's a common thread and we're on this together. I mean, it's madness. Um, actually, the, the the bonus track on the album, as is of the miss, uh, is, is putting yeah. an ending to the trilogy of uh, Her Ghost in the Foggies. We're yes. talking about 20 years of Cradle Phil, you know? Yes, yes. And that was really special. Um, doing the keys for that track and specifically the outro uh, there's a keys outro that I wrote and Phil said to me as the keyboardist do you want to write that and end that trilogy I was like that's really profound I was like oh my gosh you're asking me to basically close the chapter on this 20 year trilogy um, <laughs> no pressure but that's a really special feeling as well to carry that torch um, of wow I'm part of this piece of history right so as uh, as you are doing also arrangements the uh, orchestral part of the album i assume that you are fond of the film scores as well so have you watched uh, dune no i actually haven't tell me all about it no, because <laughs> the, the, the film score is actually great and, and i think that um cradle film maybe can do some part of uh for the bene Gesserit, the the woman the group movement on the on the um, on the film or the Harkonnen family, which is uh, the most the, the the enemies on this mm. movie, but the film score is really good, and I think maybe in in a parallel universe, uh, Carlo Phil can do a song for this movie <laughs> because everybody is talking about the tune, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna, that's added to my list. <laughs> that's <one of> my, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I love a good film soundtrack. They're so emotive. And really encapsulate whatever's happening on screen. It's such a the visual and audio relationship. It's sort of like an immersive experience, isn't it? Yeah, totally. Well, just to finish the interview, Annabelle, um, we know that you've been working on this. Uh, you as a band, we've been working on this album for so long, and you know we have the the lockdown. Nobody can yeah. play now. Well, everything is starting now, especially in the US and there in the UK. But the rest of Europe is still like doing a tour right now is not possible mm. you know everything is pushing back to to uh, 22 uh but uh having this in consideration and you've been working on this since last two years on this album mm. are you thinking about the future about another release even though this is not released yet do you have some material there or yeah we have already started writing material uh, that is well underway uh, that's a bit strange. This one hasn't come out and we're already on the next one. But for us, yeah. it's it's over a year old now. Um, so, yeah, there is we have already started writing and I will be taking a MIDI keyboard onto the tour in the USA next month to write on the bus. So, yeah, things are already moving towards the next thing. All right. You guys are not afraid about what can happen on that tour because we read every day news about bands touring and someone in the band getting COVID and the, the tour has to be cancelled, especially yeah. happens in the US. So are you yeah. a bit afraid of that? Yeah, we are. We are yeah, we are naturally quite nervous about that. Um, we've put in loads of safety precautions on the tour, so we're staying in our own bubble. Um, we're going to be only going from the bus to the venue. Um, so we're taking all the safety precautions that we can on this tour. So that's going to be a bit strange uh, for us because there'll be less interaction with the fans, of course. Yeah. Um, but safety first. I mean, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> um, 
the rules could change while we're out there. So, um, and we could be stuck. <laughs> um, extended holiday in the US. So yeah, it's definitely a, a anxiety there in that these are uncertain times. But at least we have each other, eh? That's all.